Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of How Did This Get Booked? I, of course, am your host, Jake Manning, and I'm a veteran of the professional wrestling business for over a decade, and I've held every single job except selling popcorn. I'm joined, as always, by my friend, uh, formerly drinking buddy, but looks like he's drinking solo today, Zane Riley. Zane, how you doing today? Sup, dog? <laughs> We're about ready to get real weird on this episode today. Oh, heck yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, a little early, uh, another year later, but mm. then you heard that on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. But before we get into uh, what we are discussing today, we'll introduce our non-wrestling fan. We have a returning non-wrestling fan in comedian Evan Pitfield. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm I'm doing great. This is the first time anyone's ever pronounced my last name without an S in it, so this well, is off to one. Well, when I said it, I was like, mm, maybe there's an S in it. I don't know. <laughs> where is where is the S located? Like they, they say, a lot of people say Pittsfields. Uh, recently, some guy actually wrote my name down as Pittsfields. Like, oh, it's Pittsfields. Like, oh, well, sorry, man. Pittsfields is just like this town in Ohio. I'm like, well, I'm not the town. I don't know. <laughs> not a town. <laughs> like, the size may fool. I was like, I know I'm out of shape, but you confused me with an entire town. Like, <coughs> all right. So I appreciate you pronouncing it right, man. That's awesome. Well, well I, I wasn't for sure. I knew it was a 50 50. He and thought he fucked up. I thought I fucked up. But that alpha brain just had that real yeah. good connection with you. So. He just he just showered, so he's like super fresh. His brain's like on point. Oh, yeah. He just He's making all the right decisions. Right, right. What kind of, kind of soap did you use, Jake? Uh, <laughs> we'll get into that after <laughs> the, the program. <coughs> uh, glad to be here, man. Uh, but uh, Evan, uh, I ask of all of our returning non wrestling fans. Yeah. Um, since I believe WCW Sin was yep. the episode yep. that you were on, since you watched WCW Sin, have you partaken in professional wrestling? Have you been interested in? Have you watched? Have you glanced at? What are your exposure to? It? Uh, no. Uh, so I had so, <laughs> so that's that zero. That, that's the last time. Well, so I've seen a lot of the stuff that that you've done that you've you've promoted on Facebook, and I think like I guess what's interesting about it is that you're you're trying to. Not only be professional, but you're trying to create this character, this uh, the scout, this man scout, right? So like, I, it's a little bit biased. I know you, so when I see the things that you post, it's very easy for me to attach to it. For like wrestling, it's like a commitment. I got to sit down and watch like an hour and a half video of wrestling from like 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's it's tough. Like, I mean, you have to really be into it to put yourself through something like that. And for me, it's kind of like uh, it's weird because I. I it made sense at one point in time, but now it doesn't. But I noticed that this one, Sin was, I think, 2001. Mm-hmm. And this one, I think, is 1996. So Correct. I was interested to point out that at my, I was seven when this came out. And Pokemon came out like one month after this aired. And for anyone who cares, that's what I was doing when I was seven years old. I was, I was playing Pokemon. So okay. I was collecting right. cards, playing video games. So... I don't know how that compares. What a roundabout way to say no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't watched now, more now, now you know why I felt comfortable in us mm-hmm. watching something that's wow. 45 minutes long. Yeah. I'll, I'll just book Evan and we'll yes. fill up. Because <laughs> let, 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 let me get a full disclosure last time. Yeah. Uh, last time you were on the podcast, you were starting to infuriate me towards the end because oh, cool. we were trying to get out, and I, and I pay extra for the longer the episode goes. Oh, no. And you kept trying to get one liner after one liner, and mm-hmm. and there was a point where me and Zane were like verbally talking to each other mentally, for that verbally, me- mentally me- talking, me- to mentally each talking to each other, I almost understand. like verbally, physically. Mm-hmm. In that, when will this motherfucker <laughs> shut oh, yeah, up? Yeah. We are done talking about wrestling. Do we have a light. We can just start flashing. <laughs> No, I, it was it's difficult, man. But no, I haven't watched any since last time. <laughs> I have to watch. Not even the, gift now, files. Now he's gonna yeah. start like just one word answer it. So what do you think about that? Yeah, it's great. Good. It's great. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Anything else? Nope. I'll, yeah. ju- I'll just give you a twenty in advance to compensate for my, for my, <laughs> my <lines>. rambles. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't watched any since. But, but I, I think you'll be able to reel it in, especially for this particular episode. Which I, I hope so. They sure fucking did. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, let us talk about the actual show that we're watching today. Actually, today is a request mm-hmm. of somebody who actually left a review on Stitcher. This is a cru- request from Crush Gal. She requested that we discuss the Raw Bowl. So, so to show you how. 
prepared we are and far in advance we are in this this podcast. We read this on the last episode, and this episode you got your request. And, so, and literally, it was a few day, less than a week ago. Mm-hmm. We yep. that episode. Yep. So, so we, that's our turnaround time I, for requests. I was I was predicting that maybe somebody requested that we uh, talk about this episode because of all the like low grade garbage. Like puns and jokes that the comments. Oh, this it was thing. So, like it started. I wrote this down. It started off like the opening scene is like someone's like it's certainly not the orange bowl. It's not a fish bowl. It's the raw bowl. And I was like, who's confused about that? He's <laughs> like, oh fuck! I thought it was a fish bowl. I'm on the wrong channel. I'm like what the fuck? I was thought this was the puppy halftime yeah. show. <laughs> I was just like, here we go, man. Forty five <laughs> minutes of, of this, you know. So. Well, some more of uh, the particulars of this show, it's actually uh, Raw, Monday Night Raw episode 141. It oh. was uh, aired on January 1st, 1996. It was emanating from the University of Delaware, in <laughs> Newark, uh, <laughs> Delaware. So, uh, Hi, I'm in Delaware. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but actually, for a while, this was not on the WWE Network. They had all the other Raw episodes, so this, for a long time, was the long-lost episode of Monday Night Raw. And a lot of people feel like that was because of clearances through, I don't know, calling it a bowl, or <clears throat> there was something about it that they They had to wait for the XFL relaunch uh, press conference to put it up. Exactly. Then, then I was the thing, like, oh, you know, we're launching the XFL, and by the way, we got the Raw Here you go. I know so what you're you thinking. Know, so... We just want to prove to you that we know what football mm-hmm. is. Because yep. I know the XFL yeah, may cause, make you cause we use we words. Because we know how to do puns. Yeah, <laughs> on the plus side, it's also not the worst Newark, right? So that's that's cool that they shot in that Newark. <laughs> yeah, and not <laughs> Newark, New Jersey. They chose the right, less yeah. shittier one. Yes. Yeah, they got Fuck you, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're cheersing. They can't tell on the podcast. We just cheers to fuck you, New Jersey. <laughs> but yes, this this thing is so chock full of wrestling puns. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and the thing is, like, I this football was a, puns. Yeah, this was like during the time when I was watching. Like, I was a hardcore wrestling, and this is when I would would tape Raw. And I put it on a VHS tape and then take it to school on Tuesday and give it to my friend Will Licht to to watch because he didn't have cable. And then he would give me the tape back and then I would re-record over it and, and I'd keep the Monday And we would just cycle through the Monday Night Raw yes. episodes. And that's how he saw it. And we would discuss it on Wednesday. Talk about Wednesday. You, guys, so, you were the original pirate band. Yeah. But yeah. In, in person, right? You're, it, you're yeah. And, and tape you were tape trading before tape trading yeah, was tape yeah. trading. I didn't realize you could make money off of <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, you fucked like, up, kid. I mean, if I was Michael Bikiki or the owner of High Spots, I would have figured out how to make money off this right away. Right away off your best friend. I was just trying to be a good friend. Nope, you fucked so, up. That's your first mistake. I, that's the difference between yeah. me and my boss. Yeah, that's why we're in this hot room and he is in his nice cushy office right now. Mm-hmm. Damn it. <laughs> um, but uh, I want to know, you, you talk about the conditions we're in right now in a hot room, <laughs> but what about the conditions of the PA who had to get these fans to chant Raw Bull, Raw <laughs> yeah. Bull, Raw Bull. Like, come on guys, chant Raw Bull. And they're like, why? What does that mean? What does that I, mean? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Like, they had them like burst through the... Uh, like the vinyl, like it was a football game, and I, I yeah. noticed they had like cheerleaders from high school. Like they had like <laughs> six or seven like high school age cheerleaders, and I was just like, "What does this have anything?" And Marty Jannetty makes an appearance late in the game of this. You know, he probably he probably did one of those cheerleaders. Oh, I know. That's... <laughs> Which one of you guys are my daughter? Because <laughs> I can't come unless you're my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm your daughter. I'm your daughter. I noticed uh, what's his name. Uh, Gold dust makes an appearance, uh, and he just blows the guy a kiss, and then there's an usher who delivers this guy a box of flowers, and they're not any flowers, they're like spray painted in gold. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking, like, who's the fucking prop guy that has to, like, spray paint flowers gold? He's like, I hate my job. Like, Probably that guy. Fucking stupid, right? I'm just going to huff a little bit of this gold paint. Nobody's going to fucking know. He's like, do they have to be gold? Gold? And he's like, yeah, that's I'm gold dust. They, <laughs> they can't just be standard roses. He's like, fuck. I'm not red dust. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not brown dust, man. You, know? uh, you, you want to know about the prop guy? I want to know who the writer was because it is chocked full of, like, like every, like, I forgot how condensed these mm-hmm. Raw episodes were. Yeah, which I loved. I loved it, too. Yeah. Like, I wish this was Monday Night Raw every week. Like, yeah. I would probably right watch. Right now. I would watch Monday Night Raw if it was exactly like this because they try and cram in so much and they try and get everybody over in this 
allotted amount of time, and I feel like you saw everybody in the roster. Mm -hmm. Like, so much, in fact, that, like, you know, they had to air, a, a, like, a match from a pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Like, wh why couldn't you just, like... Why couldn't you just bring somebody out and have wrestle in a real match? They're yeah. like, no, no, we've already put everybody out there. <laughs> yeah, we've got everybody here. <laughs> we got everybody here. We've already used them already. So, so now was this the full show? Because yeah. this is raw replays, and I know they abbreviate some of the episodes. Like two hour episodes are actually an hour forty five minutes. I didn't, I didn't know if there was the actual show. Was there more to it? Ooh, I'm trying to think. I think this was during the time it was only an hour okay. long. Because I because I remember I remember this distinctly. Yes, like, I, I remember all of this. I do too. I remember this all happening as such, and I think this was just the hour-long episode. Because I remember there was a time it was like Raw is War mm -hmm. and Monday Night Raw. Yeah, and they're they were two different, just, and they were two different yeah. things. That way they could so they could be the most episodic because that, well, that way they because they had two episodes technically. Yes, it was, it was just like so. It was just like such a throwback, and it was so cheesy that I started like every time I watch wrestling, I think that wrestling was actually created backwards like you would think that they make the concept of wrestling and then they're like all right we need a bunch of strong sweaty dudes but i think like <laughs> i think these guys just were strong and sweaty and they're like fuck let's do something with this and they just throw them in there like you can act right and they're like no was like, we'll pretend you can and they're just flexing the whole time and throwing people around like it th this one guy what's his name mark gunn who came out first or whatever? mark uh, okay smoking he, guns yeah he had with the numbers 38 and 45 as in 38 special and <laughs> Colt 45 yeah yep. he i mean the guy literally looked like joe dirt on steroids <laughs> like he had a mullet i was like well that's stylish i guess legit tough guy which seeing this made me think that we should do the brawl for all that I messaged you about. Oh, so are you saying that Zane Riley has put in a request? I have put in. I'm gonna have to. I guess I have to leave a review you to have get to this leave to happen. A review okay. to get this to happen, and we'll do oh. it a week later. All so. right. Hey y'all, it's Zane. <laughs> Fuck New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Five stars. Actually, yeah, might, might as well go ahead and do that because mm -hmm. the more reviews we get on iTunes, okay. the more eyeballs. So go ahead and leave. Go ahead and leave that one. And yeah. also, too, if you want to send a message on our Facebook page, yeah. so that way it shows that we. We, we answer. <laughs> okay. So do that Because no one's messaged us. Nobody's messaged us. So I, I, do, I said 0% because we have zero messages. Yeah, so pretty Reply sure. rate, non-applicable. Yeah, exactly. It's might as well say that. Well, I'm pretty sure you have to pay a toll to say fuck you, New Jersey. That's like $9. <laughs> Can't turn left to get to it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, jug handle it. Uh, speaking of funny names, <laughs> it, it, the the graphic, the name graphic below for Vince McMahon and Jerry the King Lawler is... <laughs> Vin McMahon, as in Jim McMahon, I guess, and Jerry Musburger King, as in Brett Bur Musburger. And Burger King. Yes, and mm. Burger King. So it's like so many layers of a joke yeah. that you have to understand both to even get yeah. what's going on. Which I don't, like, I assume there's a good bit that don't. Like, I don't know, maybe back then this was a macho thing and they watched both. I never. I didn't get any of those. I didn't get most of the jokes because I don't watch football. Well, I uh, I don't think you know. I don't know what the crosshatch is here for. I don't think fourteen year old Jake Manning knew who Brett yeah. Musburger okay, was. Okay, yeah. But I definitely know what Burger King was. Yeah. I don't think twenty eight year old Evan Pitfield knows who any of those people. Yeah. <laughs> well, thirty six year old Jake Manning needed like at least five minutes to figure out Vin McMahon. Yeah. Like what's that, that from? I had to hit pause, sit down, think about it. <laughs> oh, that's Jim McMahon. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course the jersey, you know, numbers have a lot of a lot of fun to it. Yokozuna is Six hundred forty-one. Like his weight. His weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I liked that. Was it Owen Hart was number one, but then Savio Vega was number uno. Yes. That was that was my favorite. Uh -huh. I, I've never seen this Yokozuna guy ever, and I heard them say that, like weighing in at six hundred forty-one pounds, and I was just like, I bet this guy's dead. And I, I googled it, and I was like, sure as shit, he died sure. like six years after this was. Yeah. Dead. yeah. We did a show on that. We did an, an episode on a show where he died like a year later. <laughs> I and just, he was bigger than he is here. He's pretty svelte at this point, mm -hmm. comparatively to the This end. is not far from his prime, mm -hmm. uh, some would say. It is, it is the prime. There's yeah. this one move that he did where he, like, uh, it's I guess it's towards and he jumps, like, off the turnbuckle. Like, he sat with on his ass. And it's, it's funny because it's, like, even, like, like, before seeing that happen, no matter if you think wrestling's real or fake, it's like, well, that's got to be fake because they would, like, he would break his entire body and the guy <laughs> below him would clearly be dead. So I was like watching in real closely. It was like, okay, sort of just like 
stomped on the ground really hard and then ever so carefully sat down on the guy. And I was well, like, that still probably hurts at 641 yeah. pounds. Yeah, exactly. Sitting there's, right on top of you. There's still momentum. Uh-huh. And also, too, it all depends on how he felt about you. Yeah. Uh, I try to assume he liked Owen. Yeah, exactly. Because Owen was basically carrying the load for him <laughs> yes, this time. Literally. <laughs> and so, but I heard a lot of like job guys, if you didn't care for the guy, mm-hmm. he would just squash the shit out Whoa, of him. I know Rikishi didn't himself. I know Rikishi didn't give a fuck about me and Rikishi is probably a hundred pounds less mm-hmm. than what Yoko yeah. is at this time. Especially when it was the era when Kishi like jumped on top of my chest and almost made me <laughs> shit my pants. Yep. So So I just man, that'd be the I would just assume that everyone pooped <laughs> when they had when they took that. All the job guys guys wear black. You yeah. get a poop. That would be an amazing finishing move if he did the mm-hmm. same thing, but he just shit on the guy as well. Like at this, like the timing, like, that'd be quite tough. To pull. Can you like that'd be an instant? Uh, very, very Andre of Bad News Brown. Yeah, I think that's a TKO. Right, that'd be that'd be amazing. Uh, <laughs> also, too, uh, so more about the the jersey numbers. Maybe you guys can explain to me. Is it funny? Is it clever for Razor Ramon to have raw four bowl? His number was four. Because that's how many times he was the Intercontinental Champion. Oh, okay. That was, yeah. I was like, raw for bowl? Like, <laughs> I, I get it. I, I thought that was a joke about, like, raw dog. Well, go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, like, you what, dug this great finish. What? What is... Yeah. What? I don't know what he's trying to put out in the world. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was how many times he was Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, right, we'll right. go raw for a few bowls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's yeah. what I was thinking, too. I thought it'd be some jo- joke <laughs> yeah. like that. That's like his you ever suck dick for, for some weed? weed? <laughs> yeah, some, well, I mean, some sort of, like... <laughs> Clever sexual pun, mm-hmm. but I was expecting a yeah. razor Ramon. Didn't realize it was pride in Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was the number of it was the number of champions uh, Intercontinentals. Intercontinentals. Okay. And of course, one two three kid is one two three. Get on him. Sid is double zero because he's crazy. Yeah, because why not? And here, here's a here's a question. <laughs> Put this in the world. Um, when Vince McMahon is talking about the Million Dollar Man and talking about how they had a violation and they should be reported to the N A double A C P. Does he realize <laughs> what he just said? Was Doubt he it. trying to say N C double A? I would assume because I don't believe that Vince McMahon is the biggest, uh, the biggest, or oh, bigot it would be a good word, uh, the biggest fan of blacks. Uh, oh, that, that was a very Freudian slip there for yeah. what you're trying to make. <laughs> but, yeah. but I got there with it. But I, but Jerry Lawler knew what it was. <laughs> and picked it right up, yeah. right away, yeah. and saying, uh, you know, this is this is grambling, not grappling. So that makes you think that maybe that was intentional. But they kept going back to it. What's grambling mean? Grambling is a predominantly black school that's known oh. for the football crowd. Doug okay. Williams went to school there and okay. introduced a lot of really good... Uh, African American football players. Oh, yeah. It's it's and it's in a historic. So this was insanely meta, and no one really got it. Yeah, well, that's gotcha. I, I think Jerry Lawler might be the only one that picked up on that right away. Because his love for minority minority women. It, exactly. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> they didn't mean for this to happen, but he took over because he knew what was up. Mm-hmm. You were talking about jerseys. I I wrote down this silly clip. Maybe the jersey or something to do with it. But they they panned over to the commentator booth. And of course, they, they had this like super hot blonde like prom queen dressed up chick sitting there. And I guess Jerry's trying to impress her the whole time. And he was like, hey, do you like my jersey? And she's like, she literally said, oh, I love it. 95 is my favorite number. And I'm sitting there, I was like, whose fucking favorite number is 95? Like, that's that's random. And is she that, loves that, the color brown. Yeah. Well, Does here, anything correlate? Or? Here's even the funnier part is the reason why it's brown is because for the Cleveland Browns. Because yeah. mm-hmm. Jerry Lawler is a big fan of Cleveland sports. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... <clears throat> The 1995 Cleveland Browns, I believe, was the last year that oh. they were in Cleveland, and it was a tumultuous year because yeah. they were supposed to be good. And then the trade, then the export rumors came about, and it just went to shit. There's actually a football <laughs> life about it, and Bill Belichick was the coach there. So a lot of people speculate if they just would have kept the team in Cleveland and kept Bill Belichick, the Browns they would be, be the, the Patriots. Patriots. Yes, yeah. everyone would be hating the Browns now, right? Exactly. That's weird. That's very odd. It's the opposite. Uh, and so would Vincent Man. He would hate the Browns as well. <laughs> and the football team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Doesn't sound like it's a great history. Yeah. Hey, hey, mascot, put me on your comedy hour, man. <laughs> Shit. I got them. They're here. Free flowing. What's up? But yeah, NAACP. Um, 
he he mentions it a couple other times. Like, and I'm just like, I think I don't think that was a joke. I think he just doesn't know because this is the same <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. It's the same did, thing. Didn't know what a burrito was. <laughs> I could see this 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 man, this crazy person, Vince McMahon, the psychopath, the, as we've learned as from we've the learned. from the uh, Andre the Giant. Yeah, it's it's always also nice to know that like. You know, the guy in charge has no idea what he's doing, right? That's always comforting, right? He's like a manager or something, right? Like he owns... He owns it. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> so it's nice to know that the guy on top is uh, it's like both Conan racist get... and uneducated, right? That's, you know, it's a good management structure. It's like getting Conan to, like, writers, do me funny jokes and him not understanding any of them. <laughs> I'm just going to say them. Well, I mean, he's, he's throwing them out here in the middle of this thing right, at high gonna... frequency. Boom, boom, boom. Um, but anyways, we have match number one, which is the Smoking Guns versus Razor Ramon and Savio Vega versus Psycho Sid and the 1-2-3 Kid versus Yoko Zuna and Owen Hart, which they go over the rules, which is basically just a four-way tag, yeah. which is very new at this time. Yeah. I don't know if a four-way tag had ever elimination. been. Elimination. Yeah, elimination as well. But also, too, they have timeouts. In which there. I think was almost an afterthought of the match. Like, I mean, obviously they knew this, the spot's there for it, but like... It just seems so awkward for everyone involved that it actually occurred. Mm-hmm. That it, it it left me more lost at times than... Because they're not like... So, they use... Uh, who uses... Sid uses it first? Uh, the kid, I think. Right? Yeah, Sid and the kid. Yes. Yeah. Use it first. And then, like, later on, they're trying to call timeouts, but they're not acknowledged. Uh-huh. And so then that made it kind of weird. But then they use a timeout again later with... Uh, uh, it was it Owen and Yoko, maybe? Mm-hmm. Both the hills use the timeouts, right? I mean, you're the timeout expert. Yeah, so like, I, yeah I, your I guess hands. it is. I have a time lord. Yes. So like, it just left me like I, I could call up Darren about... Corbin and see what he feels about this because he is the master <laughs> time lord. Fuck oh, Darren Corbin. I'm sensing some. Uh, some, call, some issues. Tell him. I gotta go. <laughs> this has been another dish. Ladies and gentlemen, actually, I will. He's a very nice gentleman. Yeah, I know he is. He's <laughs> super great, right? <laughs> I noticed, like, in that. Part like uh, whatever his name is, Gun or one of the, gu- the sorry, they're both Gun. Actually, yeah, they're both Gun. Yes. Gun one and Gun two. Yeah. They're just hired guns. The brown or the blonde? Yeah, the 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 brown, mullet or the not mullet. The mullet, the Joe okay. Dirt looking guy. He uh, he actually winds up like holding Sid like mid suplex in the air and like wa- waiting for the arena to chant and like then completes the suplex. I've never I've never seen that before. Like it's usually pretty quick. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that's like a common technique, and I'm wondering if he's like standing there like, "Fuck, man, my arm hurts." Like, can these motherfuckers clap real quick so I can just complete this move. <laughs> <laughs> this is I, bullshit. I, used to be a move, man. I used to do stalling mm-hmm. suplex. Yeah, back stall, when I, brother. Just shows you're a hoss. I guess so. I was like, I just want everyone. To, if you can't see all the way in the back, he's about to get hurt, well, but now, not yet. Now I'm the master at taking it. Yeah, I can. I can get myself all kinds. You're of a real straight. good post, Bubba. Ooh, buddy. Uh, I, I go up there until I'm seeing stars. <laughs> Nice. And you still don't give them the Iggy to put you down. Oh, I tried to, but they ignore it every time. Yeah. <laughs> they start doing squats at that point. That's the thing. Like, I'm so good at it. When I finally get to the point that I feel like I'm going to pass out, I give them the Iggy, and they ignore me for another 30 seconds. <laughs> Brother, crowd's not done counting. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and you're such a good post. Yeah. I, I can hold you up here. I'm like, you're, I can't be here for yeah. much longer. Blood's in my head, dog. Yeah. If you drop me now, my head will pop. I think my sinuses are getting heavy, too. I can't breathe. Um, also, one of the jokes that doesn't really hold up is the Penn State joke with everything we know. Yeah. So, uh, Penn State, I mean State Penn, same, <laughs> same thing these days. <laughs> it's like if you only knew, the, you were a trailblazer at that time. It's like he predicted the future. Um, and yeah, how many like shitty like toe kicks from Sid did we see in this match? Oh. I, uh, like there weren't even like kicks. It's just he ra- raise his leg and then just move. And then just kind of bump toe. into it. And then his toe would move oh, yeah. forward mm-hmm. to six inches. Like, <gasps> also, was it was it Sid or the other guy? Um, the the one the kid called a timeout and like he was still just fighting and still just kicking him. Yeah, that's what we were talking. About. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, that was, was the, the, I was like, that kind of sucks. Which that was so jumbled. Like, first off, uh, the ref in the actual like full refs black and white with the flag and everything. Mm-hmm. It was nice and cheesy. Uh, this whole thing is cheesy. I, uh, they are you know, going for cheap. You know the best, you know the best looks... part of this whole thing is, though? Is that fucking canvas. <laughs> that canvas was amazing. That the ref looked like a footlocker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is I, I'm curious, like, what what that is. It was like a slippery surface, or... It was, it was turf. Yeah, but, like... It was turf. 
I mean, I'm just curious, was that like a green canvas? And, <laughs> they and just put, added on. And then like they, they paint over the lines. Like I'm just I'm just perplexed. You trying to say you guys weren't making them at that time? No, you guys we were weren't making them in ninety six? If they told us to make a raw bull canvas today, we would tell them to fuck off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> we can get you a green canvas. Yeah. We can get you that. <laughs> you want green? I got green. We can get okay. like fake golf courses. Does that work? It's the same color. Yeah. Uh, there, there's, <coughs> there's this one line, uh, yet another cheesy I don't even know if this is humor or just like a, a waste of time. Uh, it was a waste of time. Yeah, Vince says, uh, hey, put those binoculars down, Jerry. You're annoying me. And Jerry's like, I'm right in the ring with them. And Vince is like, I wish you were. <laughs> like implying that he wants him to get hurt. And it's just like, it's like, who wrote that? That's why you got to give Vince a script because when he was off script, it's yeah, like a not... thud. Who were the ad wizards that came up with this one? Well, maybe Lipton Brisk Ice Tea. Oh, brother. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, the later on they, they pour. That's the thing, like, this is the sponsor of the yeah. bowl, and you don't announce it until, until like, the very end. 20 minutes into <laughs> this thing. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, by the way, we don't even show our name yet. Hurry up. Much like they're like, oh, by the way, post concussion syndrome mm-hmm. on Shawn Michaels in oh. 1986. Oh, man. So, towards the end of that, like, where I guess Sid is, is going nuts, uh, they had another line, which, again, I don't, I don't understand why they said this, but Jerry goes, you know what conference Sid is from, don't you? He's from the WAC. Yeah. And Vince goes, the Western Athletic Conference? And Jerry says, no, he's just wacko. <laughs> See, that's even I'm more, like, what the fuck? That's man? even like, more fucked up about the NCAA line. Because <laughs> you know what WAC stands for. But, <laughs> but you're you know. confusing NAACP I was about with to, NCAA. I was just going to text you like, Jake, like, is there another episode? <laughs> is there like, something like, else we could do? What is this? You know, and it's just like, all right. Apparently people are like, yeah, man, 80 bucks a ticket, man. He's going to say like this wacko shit. Like, it's totally <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I just, that, yeah, that's even more confusing. Like, you don't, all right, whatever. What are you doing, Vince? What are you doing, Vince? Vince, who, Whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I had to Google it. I'm like, is the Western Athletic Conference or Conference, is that even a thing? Or is that just like the is. shit that he said on the I, I believe it is. Okay. I believe it is. I, I believe what they did, like the writers, they just like, wow, that's an even more puzzling thing. You can't really Google college yeah. football and just like, what? how many jokes can you ever saw there? Like, is this work? Make some jokes. Yeah, Dick. you would have to call Dick Eversall and like, give us some jokes. Yeah, here you go. Do whatever you can. And that would explain a lot more of a lot so of by, this. By mm-hmm. Compass, that means there's a SAC. There's a, a Southern Athletic Conference as well. Do they have yeah, one? there's definitely a SAC. Yeah, that's, yeah there's definitely definitely a SAC that's involved. It's not very good design. Someone mm-hmm. should have rethought that. You know? mm-hmm. Not Vince. He, <laughs> he would have made it racist. Yeah. But Directions are a terrible way to <laughs> indicate things. <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell? Um, but we have the whole, we were talking about the timeout thing, but an elimination on your most over superstar in this yeah. match is a clothesline from behind. And a clean pin at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real like, fucking And it weird. was so jumbled, like, he had to go out of his way not to see this happen. He clotheslined him on top of the referee. Yeah. And the referee had to pretend it just didn't happen. Oh, Sid has got yeah. two left feet in this match. Oh, man. That, I mean, thank God one, two, three kids in it. Yeah. Just, Keep, be the fucking glue, and I feel like which the, everyone throwing spinwheel kicks out here is nuts. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a Mortal Kombat sidekick, sidekick. I thought it was kind of bullshit because he did knock over the ref, right? And like, uh, even in boxing, typically the ref it, like would get pissed off, but like after he gets up from being like disoriented or whatever, he's just like, oh shit, well I better start tapping. Like he wasn't, he didn't get mad. He, he didn't say like this is against the rules. He's just like, oh shit, one, two, three, and like the guy laying down that's pinned. Like, his eyes are open. He looks fine. He looks totally fine. <laughs> they just, just took like, a clothesline. Uh, yeah. It wasn't like a power bomb no, or anything. No. So. It's like the equivalent of someone just, like, from behind, like, he's just pushing you. Like, get out of my way. And he's just like, fuck, I lost. Like, I didn't see that coming. I just feel like this whole, like, Raw Bowl. It's like, is this, like, during the time where like, they just called shit? Right? I was like, just call it out there, brother. Yeah, I feel like that's what this is. It was also real weird that, like, like I loved, and I get, and I love the entire uh, Gold Dust and Razor Ramon angle. Mm-hmm. Though it is very homophobic, it's it's a uh, little problematic, as I would say. These um, days. But there's no payoff to that. Like it's been like we introduce it yeah. here in this show, but there's yeah. no it payoff in that moment. So it just looks very open ended and odd. Mm-hmm. Like you just here he is at the beginning, gets inside of his head, and has absolutely nothing to do with him for the rest of the show. Yeah, he well, didn't even fight that night. They so. did that a lot, but it's almost like a, like I said, since you have such a short amount of time, yeah. it's like we need to get. We need to push this storyline along, but we can't have matches or anything like that. Mm. They just have them do something in the entrance way or do some mm-hmm. sort of interview. Like the fact that they they only had like an hour at this yeah. time, or they were working with that short amount of time, 
they had to condense yeah. as much in there yeah, and, but, like, and push these storylines <clears throat> along to make those pay-per-views that much more special. Yeah. Where nowadays, it's like, oh, this is just more content. Yeah. That doesn't make anything yeah. very good because... Like, you don't have those constraints. Yeah. When you have just unlimited amount to do whatever you this, want, it this, doesn't make it better. This episode, like, if it were on a music, this is like, this is like the B-sides of wrestling. Like, I, I, it didn't feel very professional. It just felt like they just all put... Work, it worked to the yeah, pay-per-view at yeah, this time. It was, <laughs> this is during the time where pay-per-views were the, were the big money thing, where now... If you buy a wrestling pay per view, you're a moron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because well, you can for real, but you can buy, you can get it for free on the network. Yeah. So that's ridiculous. Yeah, it was it was pretty haphazard, I guess. And speaking of ridiculous, the Magistrator, which is the instant replay. Oh yeah. Get it? Because it's Jerry the King mm-hmm. Lawler, the Magistrator. Mm-hmm. Get it? Get it? Get it? <laughs> jokes. <laughs> so many jokes. I'm beating you over the head with it. <laughs> It's a lot of madge. Um, you were you were talking a little bit ago about the bonsai drop, Evan. Yeah, that was... Uh, gotta say that. Reversal. With that was Owen. super cool. Like, oh. I can't wait to do that and not do it as well soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't <laughs> wait to steal that spot. I can't wait for you and me to <laughs> give that to a tag team yep. and they fuck it up. Yeah. And then we're just look like the dumbest yep. people ever. Which... Like and everyone knows that it's not like a hidden secret, but goddamn, Owen Hart's so good. When they finally get the when they get the tag in, like uh, when they when the when the guns tag in Yoko and and Owen, and they have to do the little spot, and he's like weaving around Yoko. Man, he looks so fucking good. Mm-hmm. I really wish it would have been that moment of double tag, and then like Owen goes to one side and they drop down, other side they drop down, other side they drop down, and then they have to fight. But then I was thinking, like, there's really no payoff to having those two in there because if they can't pin each other, they're both disqualified. Why would they even fight? Mm-hmm. It'd, be, it'd be really funny if, like, when Yoko landed on him, he realized it was the wrong guy and he starts talking to him. He's like, oh, I'm really sorry I just dropped my whole ass <laughs> but on you. didn't get up. Yeah, I thought no. you were the other guy. You need, like, a massage or something, man? You good? Oh, right. <laughs> when are we teaming again, Jake? Let's go ahead and make this happen. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. We need to get that bonsai drop over from brother. Here. I got it. <laughs> bonsai. We'll just we'll, we'll give it. Uh, we'll, we'll sub it out with the uh, the Vader bomb that I normally do. Right. We'll work that in. I'll work on my spin heel kicks. Please, please. <laughs> please. Is, that like, is that like a nod back to uh, the World War Two, the bonsai drop? Yes. Potentially, yeah, it is. potentially offensive, right? But yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they play. They do that. Uh, you can tell they're running out of material at the end of this match because hmm. they they make like multiple draw play jokes. <laughs> like I see why they aired a match from a pay per view that wasn't necessarily on the Raw Bowl because like <laughs> we only have so many jokes. We don't have to talk football. about something for a minute. Yeah, we can't talk about football any longer. So as soon as this match is over, we can't talk about football again. <laughs> Which I like. Did they just make people watch like in the live audience? Did they just have them watch. The match, or did they have like a match during that? I wonder. You know what? I forgot to. I, I was gonna do some more research on this and figure out how this was laid out. I imagine what this was, mm-hmm. uh, and probably would explain why it turned out the way it did. I imagine they recorded an episode of Raw that aired the, either the week before or week after, mm-hmm. and they did their whole full taping, and then they're like, "Hey, we're gonna do two more matches." <laughs> But we're going to give you guys an extra week off. Yeah. Or an extra couple of days off. Yeah. Like, on top of our regular tape, we've got our month worth or whatever they recorded at that time for, mm-hmm. for an episode taping. But, like, hey, we just need a Raw Bowl match from you guys. Mm-hmm. four-way tag. You don't have to work that hard. And, like, don't worry, we'll call in the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> and, guys, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. We've and got then, a lot of material here on commentary. We'll be fine. And then all of a sudden, Kevin Nash and Mabel out there to do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he won the match, he said, like, touchdown as well. Like, that, yes, that was just a shitty throw in. Like, oh, yeah, touchdown. It's football, yeah. But <laughs> Rumble happens. Guns win it. We get to the Wrigley halftime report with Jesus, Doc Hendricks. And Man. Doot, doot, doot. <laughs> when he refers to the national champion, the WWF title as the national championship, I was, it was at this point, I was like, Man, they are really fucking committed to this football. <laughs> and then he's like, and then I was like, wait, why did I come to the realization at this, this fucking point. point that like, no, they're really committed to this football? Yeah, because they, they just doing, had a whole show about it. They just did this whole shtick for about a half an yeah. hour now. Yeah, the, what was weird is like, so first off, it it looks like a shitty like high school news anchor. 
production, right? It's like a fake desk. The guy's just like shuffling papers that are like mail. He hasn't read. <laughs> and like for some reason, uh, this is the only point in the episode that I actually had to turn my computer volume down because this fucking dude is just screaming his face off the entire time. You know about no- Doc Hendricks here in the Wrigley Halftime yeah. Report. Is that his thing? Like yeah. he's just like, and pay attention. It's like, Jesus, man. Like, why? And it's, it's like a recap. back in, brother. It's a recap. Like, you just you just saw what, what happened. There's no reason to, like, keep anybody... Explaining it to you. Yeah, it's... But it was at, like, 80 decibels. This guy's just fucking <laughs> screaming his head off and, like... It, and he's clearly wearing, like, just the top piece of <laughs> the only thing he's in his underwear like, on the bottom yeah and, oh he's definitely got Zubaz on yeah exactly. <laughs> in a fanny pack mm-hmm. he's like hey pay attention this is really important you're like well because I can't take you seriously because we you're gotta in, kill time here's how we're doing it yeah he's in like a fake cubicle it, it was it was ridiculous so. Survivor Series prevented by Mattel's Karate yeah. Fighters <laughs> 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 Someone's just like he's got a funny voice. Just let him do it, and then hey, that's his job now, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Uh, any other thoughts about the halftime report before we move on, Zane? Thank God it's over. Yes, okay. <laughs> but we get to see a replay. Sure is it the fucking puppy bowl? That's for sure. <laughs> well, we get a replay of the hog pin match mm-hmm. from an in your house taking taking place against. Hunter Hearst Helmsley and Henry O. Godwin, a uh, pay per view that I saw live. Sure did, me too. All right, Same. I felt I felt like an idiot because I, I know I recognize the guy's face and they say his name I was like pretty sure I thought that was like Triple H or something. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, he, that's three H's of names. So yep. I guess it is. The it was three person. H's of names. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had to figure it out. Like, how long did he go by that name before he went by Triple H? Ninety seven, ninety eight, I think is kind of like mm-hmm. that. that okay. Switch got flipped. Interesting. So. <coughs> but, uh, they, I was going to say, they had another shitty pun, I guess. They were talking about the pig pen. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Vince was like, yeah, the loser gets thrown into the pig pen. And Jerry's like, let me tell you, everything that's brown in there is not mud. <laughs> I was just like, come on, man. Like, I hate how they, they bring in Jeff Foxworthy to the mix. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> you might be from Bitters, Arkansas. Uh-huh. Get that. Well, I, another thing that I really didn't like to see get in there was Triple H with his big slice in the back. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the from the rail, <laughs> of, like the door, taking like, it right up, yeah, taking the rail there, and then just get thrown in that mud. Listen, guys, we are lucky that Triple H did not die of trichinosis. Yeah, just I, right there. Just, I'm gonna put that There's out there. There's poo in that wound. Yeah, yeah. I I remember it, like I remember it when I was a kid from watching it. I forgot there were pigs in it. So I, yeah. like as it was occurring, I didn't take into consideration there could be real shit in there. I thought like the old slop fake slop bucket deal where it was like water and some lettuce or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, oh my god, there's fucking pigs in there. That's real poo. Mm-hmm. Oh, good for you, Triple H. Because I'm all, I'm already on a real high on Triple H after the WrestleMania match, mm-hmm. where he just showed he's the greatest wrestler in the entire world for how great he made Ronda Rousey and everybody look around him. It took that match. <laughs> well, I mean, I always knew he was fantastic, but like that one is like he's the best in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who's Kenny and who's Jericho? It's yeah. fucking Triple H. <laughs> I thought I, I thought like I felt bad for the pigs. Like, Man, they got real scary. Yeah, like every scene, like they they show you the big pen in in the beginning, and like the pigs are kind of like we don't really want to be here. And then like every time that they're actually in the pig pen and the camera pans, like you just see them running away to the opposite corner. Yeah, like, get terror. the fuck out of here! Like Pia is freaking the fuck out. Yeah, I I don't know. I felt pretty bad. Uh, they, they were looking to get out of there, so that's pretty disgusting. They're like, sure. we shouldn't here. We don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Like, if you guys were concerned about the pigs, I was concerned about Triple H. Yeah, it's getting dysentery. Yeah, because I, I think I heard a story about like old mafia guys. They would because they're not supposed to mix like pigs' blood with like people' blood or something. Okay. Or, oh, or like I, I go heard on. It's very specific. Yeah, I wish. I, well, which is weird because you put pigs' heart in people, so I don't know if that's necessarily true. <laughs> yeah, we gotta but, wash that off. Yeah, I think there there is there is somebody that said that they like Blackjack Mulligan was telling this story in a shoot interview where he got somebody tried to cut him and they, they cut him with a knife and they just kind of like left a deep cut but they didn't like mortally wound him. Yeah. And but he just went about his day like ah oh, fuck I just got sliced by somebody but then all of a sudden it got really bad and it was it turned into a bad infection Jeez. and come to find out that they had cut a pig before they cut him and it left this. 
horrendous infection. Ugh, dude, I got a paper cut. Get like that he, fucking bacon away from me, man. We <laughs> talked about so, this. So, like, I, I remember that being a story. But at the same time, too, is Blackjack Mulligan a biologist? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll say I know and I don't believe he is. Okay. All right. Just, I, oh, time just out, saying. Just saying. Timeouts and the validity of the medical degree of Blackjack Mulligan. Yep. That was your expertise. <laughs> I got two fucking things. That's where it's at. Um, we get to see a little bit of preview that they're going to play a WWF title match on Raw. Yeah. Like they are, they are hurting coming out of the holidays for content. Um, and I remember this British Bulldog versus Bret Hart match. This was a match. That match is the match that I showed to my friend Mike Ossemacher in high school when he told me that wrestling was fake, and he told me that the blood was fake. And I go, oh yeah, <laughs> look at this shit. <laughs> and he goes, look at this pig shit. Changed his fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I always heard like the rumors of like blood capsules and stuff, and I didn't see until later on that his back was bleeding. I was like, that looks that looks real. You got a capsule good, back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what what exactly? Well, I was talking about the British Bulldog Bret Hart match. Yeah, because Bret uh, just bleeds like a stuck pig. Hey, oh, that's yeah. intended. Because this is the Raw Bowl episode. Hey, <laughs> Jesus, there was a flag down for too many puns. <laughs> there was, there was I'm a, gonna run the draw play. I'm gonna run the draw play. There was another pun. Uh, they right when Triple H got slammed up against the gate of the pig pen. Uh, Jerry was like, "That little piggy went to market." It's, just, <laughs> it's like, God damn it, dude! Like, really? Like, how many? He's fishing. He's doing all he can. If I had a nickel for every shitty. Pun in this episode. I had two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, I have enough to buy groceries. Which is which is almost what the rating was for this episode. <laughs> this rating for this episode was a two point six, which uh, out was, of twenty, you're saying? No, uh, it, it was it's pretty standard for the time, but of course, like a few years later, the ratings would double, yeah. and they would be in the oh. range of like a four or five or a six or a seven, depending upon what was going on in the episode. This is the Nielsen rating type deal. Nielsen. But that, that basically equates that two and a half million, million people, people. Saw, saw this live. Yeah. Um, well, let's kind of round this back around home with match number three. What match? Yeah. Diesel taking on King Mabel, which was this is a rematch from SummerSlam '95. What in the fuck? <laughs> like, just jobbed out real. Did somebody hard. have heat, or they were just like, did they? Just oh, had need? to be Mabel. Had to be Mabel because after that yeah. SummerSlam match, like Nash had been like, "Fuck this guy." Yeah. Fuck everything about him. When I get my fucking chance to job him out hard on a holiday so more people can see it, <laughs> I fucking I, take I, it. I, I was looking at the um, like the timer bar in yeah. the episode, and it was hit, it was like at the thir- it was like thirty eight minutes. And I was just like, how are they gonna squeeze another fight into this? Like, and it's like, oh yeah, that's how they're just not gonna have one. <laughs> figure it out. Like, I was like, oh okay, like he just farted and then he tapped out. I'm like, oh okay, cool. cool, cool that's cool, it. Cool. That's all it took. I was like, damn, that's the quickest. Uh, it took him longer to get his fat ass carried in there than it did uh, yeah. for him to work. Which, uh, that, if you notice, uh, the people that carried him in, uh, I spotted Matt and Jeff Hardy. Oh. And I saw Ponytail, so that leads me to believe that Champagne Marty Gardner was the other really? person. Really? So it also would lead me to believe that Jason R. Joey Abs would have been the fourth, because <laughs> they were all running together. But I definitely saw Matt and Jeff oh. carrying in Mabel. Th- this, was, this was like the premature ejaculation of a wrestling match equivalent. It was literally like two seconds, and it wasn't exciting. It was just a super... Super let down. And right before it, they had, uh, what, Savage had a, a Slim Jim commercial. Nacho uh, Man. Or, no. or Nacho, oh yeah. Yes. I write that right now. Yeah, he was, right he's off. like, he was like, you need a little excitement in your life. He's like, then just keep watching this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about anything to say past here. He's yes. just eating a Slim Jim. I was like, all right. Well, speaking of getting his, Diesel got his by stealing this Raw Bowl from yep. Larry Lawler. Yep. Son because, of a bitch. Because in 1986, women are property. That's apparently. right. So... <laughs> And possession is nine-tenths of the law. <laughs> but uh, speaking of possessions, we get to see the presentation of the Lombardi Trophy. <laughs> the best Lombardi Trophy ever. The the Steve Lombardi mm-hmm. Trophy, not the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And then the Brooklyn Brawler gets dumped. Uh, lipped Covered in brisk in ice. My, my favorite part about the... Um, the Mabel Diesel fight was like I saw someone like the camera panned off and I saw someone in the crowd that had this huge like fucking like 72 font glittered poster that was like go Mabel and I was like that guy took like (laughs) he took like three hours to make that poster and then this guy just fucking quit he's like god damn he's like that that cost me $40 at Michael's and he just 
that the shit match. Forty dollars in nineteen ninety six, <laughs> assholes. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. What am I supposed to do with a, a quart of glitter? Like, I made this for you, you piece of shit. That, that's almost as equally as bad as that Man Scout Manning picture that's over oh. your left shoulder. <laughs> with all of them, really? Yeah, right? yeah, all of them that are hanging up in the room. No, Some the poor rules. man. Uh, maybe these nice drawings that are on my Instagram page. Nice. You can take a look at them. Uh, for all matches that I lost, probably pretty decisively. <laughs> <laughs> and almost immediately. Well, was it greater than three seconds at least? Arguable on some. Uh, arguable on some. If he, I don't know if this, these were made for my match against the Boogeyman. But <laughs> like in current day, if, if he was fucking texting, he would have missed the whole match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which he most likely would have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Uh, we also get to see a vignette of Vader is coming. Uh, fuck him. Make him yeah. stay at home. Yeah. So that's how I feel about it. Is that the debut of Vader in WWE? Or would that be the debut? Ooh, that's a good... I, I, I should have researched I would believe so. I believe so. It's about the time that so, it's... Okay. So he's only there past that for like a year or two. Because yes. he just gets injured almost right away. Mm-hmm. That, that was really weird to watch. That was even like a, a worse quality video than the news anchor thing, the halftime report. And I was like, Vader, and like the first image is like blacked out image of his face. I'm like, oh, who's this guy? I don't, I don't know anyone. And then it's literally just this fucking fat dude with like a, a bank Ooh. robber mask on fucking his face. Fucking Leon. I was like, this is not intimidating. You know, like, that, that guy- my mom, she used to say fuck Vader. <laughs> she, she was just like, she would always, and I might have told the story on this podcast before. My mom was always, like, she'd walk in the room just to kind of shoot over wrestling to yeah. try and avoid her son from being in it in the future. Mm, that'd be a fair. Good mom. Yeah, a good mom. And <laughs> she would uh, she would always, like, talk shit about, like, you know, oh, these fucking pro wrestlers are always out of shape. She goes, except for this guy right here. And when she pointed it on the screen, it was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Of course. He was the ringmaster. Yeah. So it just goes to show that. You know, Your mom had better taste than most. Exactly. She yeah, knew, even she the knew, layman, yeah. She knew he was a star mm-hmm. immediately. But, yeah. So she had better taste than Eric Bischoff. But she, <laughs> conversely, when Vader would come on the screen, she's like, fuck this guy. Yeah, he's it, just some it, fat it, ass no, with a mask. Like, she, he's like, he goes, that guy looks like my fucking dad. Who, yeah. did, who committed suicide a I was like, ago. I was watching like, it. I was like, I could never do that. turned deep, Mom. My mom yeah. is fucking raw, son. Yeah, she, she's oh, shit. Raw, raw for or whatever. Yeah, she I, raw for bowl? I, Your no, mom's dude. raw for bowl? <laughs> I, I watched this promo video, and I was like, like the whole episode, I was like, I, I can't. I could never see myself doing this. And then his video, I was like, oh, fuck, I, I can do this. Like, he's just in his apartment with, like, one sock on. Just lifting, doing like, flies. A, yeah. And doing flips on trampolines. Yeah, yeah. And, my, and my favorite part, uh, they the did this. can do that. They did this a few times out, out the episode, but this is the most obvious time. They had this background music that was, like, an existing song, but, like, a little bit off. Mm-hmm. So they didn't have to pay copyright. They had Eye of the Tiger, mm-hmm. and it was going, like, dan. Da, da, da. <laughs> da, da, da. Like it was like major scale instead of minor <laughs> scale, just so they didn't have to pay for it. And I was like, just different enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, just enough. Just like, just like vanilla ice and under pressure. Yeah, just I was like, different enough. I was like, you spent the same amount of time putting that together. So you could have just much. paying the licensing fees to use the song. I was like. All right. it, was, it was pretty ridiculous. Uh, well, speaking of ridiculous, we close this whole. You thing mean out. the best part of this show? Yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> Billionaire Ted is wrestling war room with the Nacho Man, the Huckster, and Scheme Gene, and also an appearance of Vince <laughs> Russo. So, yeah. um, they talk about more action, and they talk about how like WCW doesn't have a whole lot of action in it, which is odd that you know WWF in 1995 and 1996. Kind of mocked at ECW all the time for not having enough action either. Yeah. So to say that they are the pinnacle of action, especially in an era of Dean and Eddie, Super J Cup, Worlds Collide, Pay Per View, even PG thirteen and USWA were yeah. part of it, some of these guys oh, yeah. on the show. So I like that they talk about going off the top rope and they show someone do a top rope elbow drop and the Macho Man's like, nope, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's his fucking finisher. Which he still did. Yeah. Until, like, almost 2,000. Yeah. Until <laughs> yeah, he ran out of hips. Mm-hmm. They, like, the, all these people backstage, it looked like they went to Party City, and they, the guy was just like, we got 20 bucks, just pick out your favorite fucking costumes, get some fake mustaches, get some wigs, and we're going to film a video, and it's going to sell millions. Like, how did that work out? How is that possible? Like, they, if, if you and I did that, we'd get no views on YouTube. We need an arena, and we need... Uh, Jim McMahon or whatever to show up. And exactly. Actually, they got Ma- sued over these. Actually. Did they? Yes. Oh, seriously? Yes. They had Worth it. I love these things. What happened? Uh, because they were basically making fun of Ted Turner, Hulk Hogan, yeah. and Macho Man, all that stuff. And 
uh, they were seeing it as more of a parody, but I guess it was more of an accusation of slander mm -hmm. or I, I don't remember defamation. What their, defamation, I believe, probably was what they, they filed. So. Yeah, they deleted that Facebook post. <laughs> and they don't want to affiliate me with. And then of course WWF backed off because this mm -hmm. is like only a couple years removed from Vince going through the steroid trial. So yeah. like, I'm not paying any more fucking lawyers. Yeah. I just won't do it anymore. Yep, you win. You win. We'll settle right now. Settle right now. Bye. He's in nice guy mode. He's just doing football puns for a living mm -hmm. now, right? He's like, I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah almost went to jail. <laughs> yeah. There, there a little bit of juice. Um, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on this episode. For me, it just made me realize why I love pro wrestling. Yeah. Because I was like, gosh, like everything was so crammed in this episode, and I want to see next week's episode. Mm -hmm. I almost, I rolled right into the next episode because it just automatically yeah, followed yeah. the network. I'm like, maybe I'll watch this. And if I had a little more time, I would have. But like, it just goes to show, like these small doses mm -hmm. just make make you want to keep coming back every week. Like teasers almost. If yeah. I didn't have to watch the next thing we have to do, I totally would have because it had me at like Hakushi doing something, and then they're replaying Bret Hart and Bulldog. Oh, and then they also had, like, Shawn Michaels press conference. Yeah, oh, yeah, I would have definitely like, watched it. Shawn Michaels at the height of his dictum, because I, lo I love that era. Would this have been the Lose the Smile? No. This is, what was this, this press this, conference? This is leading up to, I believe, the Iron Man match. Okay. Mm. So, like, he's at the point of, like, I'm going to be the fucking man around here. <laughs> I'm going to wear a tight shorts and this a is dick the, out. And this is the time where, like, Bret Hart is under the impression that he's being sabotaged. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're getting put in there against, you know, Diesel and you're mm -hmm. taking these slow-moving guys while Sean's in there with Owen getting his cardio up. So, like, Sean's like, I'm going to show Bret that I'm in better shape than him and I'm a better fucking athlete. Like, just that on-the-edge Shawn Michaels yeah. at his peak of his <laughs> powers of politicking and athleticism and in-ring prowess <laughs> like just the peak of <laughs> a psychopath yeah, of a dickhead it just I, I i i when i see promos of that era i just it's a fascinating glimpse into a human mm -hmm. being because you know the the crazy person that's behind those eyes mm -hmm. and it's just it's more much more fascinating yeah than that, so I was it was entertaining. I guess like overall it was like okay, well a lot of criticism, but I guess they did pack a whole bunch into forty five minutes. Yeah, it was like it was pretty silly, but I was like, all right, I guess it'd be pretty hard to to orchestrate that. So I guess it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Or anything else? We're good. Uh, I'm gonna go home and watch one forty two when I get a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I'll, I'll do the same. But uh, uh, Evan, this is very appropriate that you're here oh, wow. at this moment in time because uh, we're gonna fucking murder you. <laughs> Uh, Dad, I love you. Mom, I love you. Yeah, it's good knowing you. We're um, going to murder you. And when we've buried his you... His name is Zane Riley. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And when we've buried you... Caleb Conley. ...in my nature preserve out oh. back, me and Zane will obviously be very dirty. So yeah. We'll be very dirty. And what we'll need to do is clean ourselves off with some Evans Country <laughs> Clean Soap, who is a sponsor of this podcast. Oh, so we're just going to go straight into it, huh? And, and from, what I, from what I hear... Jesus Christ. Um, you know, soap that's got olive oil and palm oil and coconut oil and shea butter. It's great for washing off blood. Yeah, especially if it's the man that actually made this soap, Evan. <laughs> yeah, I was actually <laughs> unaware that I... Yeah, I... I'd, you're I'd, not I'd, him? Oh, you're definitely For someone who smells like me, I don't think I'd be a good sponsor for soap. Well, True that's that. why we're True murdering that. you. Yeah. And our thing is we're washing ourselves off from the murder. And it'd be great to wash the murder off, especially with hypoallergenic. Uh, it's great something... for people with sensitive skin. Yeah, something. Because I'm so sensitive and murder <laughs> is very hard on my skin. Yeah. I I'm imagining this is the last episode that they're going to sponsor. Uh... Nope, nope. They've already signed on for at least one more. Oh, Because we're going we're gonna to do it next. A ab absolutely. I mean, I, I appreciate their product. I just ran through their product mm -hmm. that their soap has you know, <sighs> you know helps heal and restore and hydrate your skin especially after murder yeah like, that'd be really funny if someone's like is that a dead body in your backyard you're like yeah there's like because it smells fucking great yeah that smells like <laughs> like oatmeal and milk and honey he looks so and young like his skin is so soft even with the maggots eating out is that but are you saying orange? that we we yeah. washed you no, after the murder no you're dead you're dead you're now fertilizer for our tomato plants that we're going to oh, grow man. up on you damn it that'd be great fertilizer man. I'm washing myself off a wonderful mm -hmm. bar of black orchard soap mm -hmm. from Evans Country Clean which I need to get some <laughs> more and if I want to get some Evan Country Clean soap I just have to log on to EvansCountryClean.com and use the promo code for all of our listeners the promo code BOOKED15 so I was on the road this past weekend and one of the kids in my car said they listened to our our, uh, our podcast and they also bought a bar of soap from it. 
Good. And use our code to do so. Awesome. And once again, that promo code is booked15. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you what, man. That Irish spring. You don't want to be dead uh, with Irish Springs, man. That dries your, your skin out. I've murdered in, in Watch with Irish Springs. It does not work. No, it does it's, work. It's bullshit. Is Evans. <laughs> I can't read upside down. Evans Country <laughs> Clean. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're, if you're a mechanic, if you're a murderer. Uh, you know, Evans Country Clean is uh, the way to go. I, I think I'm going to pick up a bar myself uh, if you don't. Well, I mean, it's kind of going to be moot at this point, but go on. Yeah, exactly. I Do mean, you mind if I take one shower with it before you murder it just to get the scent? Fair enough. Fair enough. Or you could do what Zane does, and that bar of soap can be your last meal. Yeah, you so, can eat it. You, you can go. go half and half, really. I don't think you're going to use the entire bar of soap. I, it, I Rumor has it it eliminates coffee breath, so well, it's, good for mor- it's good for mornings. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. That's That's awesome. EvansCountryClean.com. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the time where we talk about the reviews. Uh, <laughs> iTunes, still Donut 1978. You're still towing that line with a five star review that says, How did these two get a podcast? Yeah. Nice. Uh, good question. And Ratlin, uh, you are still at the top of the heap for Stitcher, um, right alongside OSW Review. Jake and Zane understand how to joke about a niche interest, uh, such <laughs> as uh, football puns on a wrestling show, uh, in a, this is a funny to anyone, uh, non-wrestling fan helps. Okay. I wish that the last one would have been the lady that wanted wrestle ball, or raw ball, <laughs> mm-hmm. but she stayed that way for months after we've even done the episode. Oh, that would have been great. Cool. She would be raw. For she months. was. She was just one away. Yeah. Uh, crush gal. So if she wants to re-request it. That'd be real grad. Oh yeah. If she wants to write another review, go right ahead, and we'll just keep keep it up there. But guys, if you want some more content, if you want to go back in our, our previous episodes and stuff like that, we got a wonderful Andre the Giant episode from mm-hmm. last mm-hmm. week. We got a lot of comments about that, so make sure you check that out. Um, but if we've made a, a mistake or you have a correction or if you're like, hey, the Raw Bowl was awesome, <laughs> uh, make sure you tweet me at Manscout Manning or email me at jake at sslshow.com or make sure you log on to the website, howdidthisgetbooked.com. I have t-shirts available. I will have some new merch posts here in the next week or two make sure you check that out and also make sure you subscribe on itunes google play youtube soundcloud stitcher and wherever podcasts are available this has been another edition of how did this get booked Woo! nice